how much of one's life is a result of their past karma are uh, the injustices and unfairnesses that one faces in one's life a result of their past karma if so do you accept these injustices on and find solace in the fact that okay the karma is being cleared <laughs> 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 even though it might seem detrimental to our lives in so many ways uh, samantha you are old enough for this i'm not saying you're old i said you're old enough <laughs> uh that do you still expect the world to be fair to you that's why i'm asking this question <laughs> <laughs> the, that is can i blame it on my past karma is what i'm asking i want the world to be fair to me is a school girl question <laughs> by now you should know the world is not fair it will not be fair to you but If you dig deep into yourself and have a taste of life not a taste of your thought and emotion the taste of life that you are then you will see life is not just fair it's just fantastic <laughs> So do you want fair life or fantastic life you must decide I've noticed this that beyond the material ego There is now suddenly a wide spe- spread. Who is this ego guy? Your friend? <laughs> It's all around me, <laughs> <laughs> and in my industry, the heights of it. <laughs> so beyond the material ego, I've noticed there's com- there's now widespread spiritual ego. I've come across a lot of people who are now on a spiritual path, <laughs> not you, Sadhguru, <laughs> who. who who consider themselves superior to people who are not on a spiritual path how would you advise such people to ensure that they don't fall a prey to this new spiritual ego <laughs> we'll uh, first we'll address this ego guy okay if you show me where it is i'll fix it right now i wish i knew where it was it just keeps coming suddenly so you don't know where it is The thing is just this say at certain moments as a person as a woman you are a beautiful person wonderful person i mean I, i'm sorry i i didn't say only at certain times you're beautiful you're always beautiful but certain times you're wonderful <laughs> all right certain moments maybe you're nasty possible so whenever you're nasty you say it's my ego Why don't you say it's me I am sometimes wonderful sometimes nasty if you see this naturally nastiness will go down but if you say whenever you are nasty mr ego does this and you don't know where he is you don't know his address or id nor do you know his phone number <laughs> so how do you fix this guy so everybody has this going in their life because uh, this is uh, spiritual jargon without being spiritual is all over the place particularly in india because we have uh, you know 15 20000 years of spiritual history so we know all the words we know what atma paramatma this one that one ahankara everything we know words only <laughs> words only <laughs> noted <laughs> so we can just throw words like this and confuse a western population quite a bit <laughs> because if you come here they'll say mukti shakti this one that one all kinds of things i know a lot of people who gone and set up spiritual centers in the west particularly in america because they just know one chant just one chant <laughs> okay i said toma sadgamaya with this they run the whole thing <laughs> so unfortunately spirituality uh in some ex- in some ways it's come there it's come there because there is need in the society there is not enough source because of that people are manufacturing this here and there this happened uh, you know uh, a few years ago 15 12, 15 16 years ago and uh, i was in united states and then uh, somebody in the office our office told me 
Sadhguru, did you know every day, hundred thousand people are typing out the word spiritual? I said, is that so? Type it out and see what comes out. Are we even there in the picture? <laughs> they typed out spirituality. First thing that comes up is a spa in Mexico. You've been there. <laughs> and the next thing that comes out is a call girl in Northern California. She has learned uh, all that SEO. For everything she says spiritual, 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 hundred and eight times she uses the wor word spiritual on our website. You say spiritual, she comes up, number two. I thought this is a shame. For thousands of years, anything spiritual means people looked east. East means India, that's what it meant. So I said we must start something, uh, a spiritual gateway. That if people say, if they seek spirituality, they must look towards India. Because this is one culture which has spent maximum amount of time. <laughs> maximum amount of time exploring human consciousness and the mechanics of what a human being is, how this functions on the surface and its very core. How does this function? What can we do about it? This has been explored. I am not saying this out of my Indian origin. I am saying this after looking at the world closely, that nowhere else has it been looked at like this. So, I said uh, we must start a spiritual gateway, India, the spiritual gateway. I must tell you this, till about fifteen years ago, I had not met a single guru in this country. I, I just did not meet, I was just busy doing my own work. I never thought I had to go and look for somebody, I had never been to any other ashram anywhere. And uh, then I thought, okay, let me make an attempt, then I started making phone calls. Uh, they all received my call pretty well and then I started visiting some people and started putting together. We had one meeting with one hundred and twenty-five gurus. We made this uh, thing that nobody talks about their philosophy. You keep your philosophy, this is just a meeting. This is just about how to enhance your ashram or your yoga center, whatever you have, how to enhance the quality. We will teach you management, we will teach you branding, we will teach you how to make a website, we will teach you how to present yourself to in the international community. Your philosophy, we don't, we don't touch, you don't touch mine, I don't touch yours, you do your own thing. Because that is the beauty of this culture, that it can exist in hundreds of forms, thousands of forms and it's okay with us. So when I went about doing this, well, I met many wonderful people, but at the same time, at least sixty to sixty-five percent, I… it hurts me to say this, I found that if I walk into an airport or a golf course, I meet better men than in the so-called spiritual centers, because it's full of jargon, no heart, no depth, no profoundness, simply one one chant, one one nonsense, one philosophy that they read somewhere, it's going on like this, this needs to change. So to bring this profoundness to people, as people get closer to me, I get harder and harder and harder. Those who are very close to me, I am bloody cruel. <laughs> yes, because just to bring integrity into spirituality is so hard, because the moment they get spirituality, little, like you said, you're calling it spiritual ego, I call it spiritual airs. They get spiritual airs, air bubbles get in their head. Suddenly they start acting funny, they start seeing things that don't exist, they start talking about nonsense that nobody understands. If you speak something, whatever nonsense you speak, people in front of you must understand, otherwise why the hell are you speaking? Because the purpose of speech is to make somebody understand what you're saying. No, if I say something that you don't understand, I become big, you become small. This is rubbish. This is going on for too long. So, this whole spirituality as a thing, unfortunately has fallen on bad times, but slowly it is rising because people's longing is increasing. I must tell you this, forty years ago when I first started the programs, in our engineering programs, in various different forms, eighty-five percent of the people 
used to come to the programs only for health problems. Only twelve, fifteen percent came to know something. Today, over ninety percent of the people come because they want to know something, experience something. Only eight to ten percent. Only eight to ten percent are coming for health issues, which is a significant change in human consciousness. About this ego business, this is one thing we must settle. See, within you, is there only one person or two? I think one. <laughs> you think one? Mm -mm, I'm going to go with one. One. <laughs> that means you're an individual. An individual means the word individual comes from indivisible. You're not further divisible, that's good, you're an individual. If you are two, then you are either schizophrenic or possessed, psychiatrist or exorcist <laughs> Either a psychiatrist or an exorcist has to come. So this is very important, everybody settle this, that don't talk about atma, paramatma, ego, this one, that one, you are an individual. What kind are you? Are you a wonderful one or a nasty one? Fix the damn thing <laughs>